On the 9th of September, 40 Indigenous youth from all over Australia came together to talk about health. My name is Todd Fernando, I'm uh, 23 years old, living in Western Sydney. Grew up in a country town called Condoblin and uh, my family's from Gilgandra, uh, which is Wiradjuri country. My name is Irisha Victor, I'm from, I grew up in Broome, but I'm from the Dampier Peninsula. So the location for the Health Forum was here at the National Centre for Indigenous Excellence. Um, it's based in Redfern, which is, which is an awesome story to begin with. The knowledge and the experience this community has, and especially the centre, being a, you know, what once was a primary school and now into a thriving community centre for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people to come to and, and meet. I was a little nervous, nerve-wracking, uh, trying to get a feel of who's here and what sort of things are going to happen, but we arrived on the Wednesday and we've done a little bit of icebreakers and got into relaxed mode and sort of got real comfortable with one another and, and then we kicked it off. Day one of the, the forum, we, we sat down and we discussed issues relating to Indigenous health. Um, and Indigenous youth health in particular. The rates of immunisation within in the Aboriginal community is pretty low. Sell drugs, be cool, start smoking, stuff like that. And that's all the kind of stuff that goes through every community. They don't tell you about diabetes and um, chronic diseases and stuff. My issues that are happening in my community are similar to those that are happening in other Indigenous people's communities. And we, f we found that accessing primary health care was a big disadvantage for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander youth. Mental illness was a big one that came up a lot of times. One of the big things that we all came together and discussed was having a National Indigenous Youth Health Voice, which really looked at empowering Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander youth into having their own voices heard at a national level. So day two of the, the Health Forum, we were able to come together in our states to talk about local issues. We don't have psychiatrists and podiatrists or nutritionists or psychologists. Some Indigenous people don't have a sense of identity and be afraid to identify as Indigenous because of repercussions that may occur. Where I'm from, up in Torres Strait, Yam Island, cost of healthy foods has increased. Seeing our young people graduating high school and completing those high levels of education. I was able to talk about what issues we face within our communities and bring them together and collate them into recommendations and strategies. So you should take uh, great pride in your participation because uh, you will be making a contribution as a result of what you've said here and the work you've been doing over the last couple of the days. He's a good listener and, and we fired questions at him and he answered them as best as he could. He's the Minister for Indigenous Health but he's a human being and he was able to show that by you know, by making us feel relaxed and, and asking us to call him Warren and, and I turned around and I called him Uncle Warren which was, which was a good friendship and, and a, a bond formed. Without, without the Australian Government and the facilities like the NCIE here in Redfern, we wouldn't have had the opportunity to come together and talk about the issues that we as Indigenous people and we as Indigenous youth face every day in our communities. So just a big thanks to, to those people that put so much effort and so much time into listening to our stories and, and wanting to listen to our stories.